Play, cool. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to day 23. It's kind of crazy that we're coming up on the quarter mark of this journey. Day 25 is around the corner. It'll be this Friday. And it, it's kind of so strange because in some ways it feels like it's taken ages to get to day 25. And then in other days I'm like, wow, I can't believe how fast the time has gone. I suppose that's just a, a bit of a metaphor for life in general, right? January for me this year uh, has flown by. It's, it's traditionally like the longest month of the year, right? I think particularly for, for people with the, like finances and stuff, because like most companies, if you work for a company, will pay you before Christmas and then you don't get paid until pretty much this weekend, I guess, for most people, right? So it feels like a long one. And then it's weird because then we go into February and although February this year is a leap year, um, it, it's a lot shorter. I don't really get it. I, like I said, I think I talked about this on another episode, didn't I? About how it makes absolutely no sense. We should just have 13 months. Each one of them should be 28 days. That means that every week, Sorry, every month would start on a Monday and end on a Sunday. It would be a hell of a lot easier. Anyway, that is not what the topic of today's episode is. Today we're going to talk about a very popular method of dieting. Intermittent fasting. And I said a very important word there. Method. Because that is what it is. It is one of many methods that people can use and have used very successfully, some people, to lose a significant amount of weight and body fat. However, other people have also really struggled with it. And I think it's important to recognize before we get into why you may be doing it wrong, which is the topic of today's video, as to why it works or doesn't work for some people. I feel like I just heard the camera stop. Let me, give me a second. Nope, we're good. <laughs> Ignore me, we are back in the room. I heard a weird noise from my phone. Anyway, so, People get very upset if a lot of their friends or their family have tried intermittent fasting and it hasn't worked for them. And they're like, oh my God, like, well, what's wrong with me, basically? There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. It very much comes down to personal preference. And I think the most important thing to understand before you pick your methodology of how you're going to go about this process of losing weight and losing fat is to understand the principle. And we're not gonna get too deep into that today, but the principle, if you can go and Google this if you want, maybe I'll do a whole other video on it, is the calorie deficit. You need to be consuming fewer calories consistently for a pretty extended period of time um, than you are, bur than you are uh, burning, right? You need to be bringing less in than you are expending, effectively. Now, how you do that, the method, is very much down to personal preference. Some people, like the, the super popular ones nowadays, you know, you've got the intermittent fasting. I'd say that's, that's probably, that is probably the most popular one, I'd say, actually. Um, it works for a lot of people because they, a lot of people can't pallet food first thing in the morning. They wake up and they're not hungry. Not only are they not hungry, the thought of food actually makes them feel ill. I used to be like this. When I was a teenager, I used to really, I always used to eat my breakfast. I felt like, I feel like my mum used to like make me have it. I can't remember. I honestly can't remember. Don't hate my mum for child abuse. <laughs> Very loving mother. Um, but I, I used to then get on the school bus and I remember feeling like sick every single day. Um, but yeah, a lot of people into adulthood, they really struggle with feeling hungry. And even if they wanted to eat, they don't want to eat because they just, it makes them feel sick and they don't know what to eat. And then they get so confused because they've, again, they've heard all this conflicting information. They're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Toast is bad and avocado is good. And, you know, they, they have this very binary system to everything like we do with a lot of things in life. Um, so it works for a lot of people because they just don't like breakfast anyway. They don't actually naturally get hungry till maybe like 10, 11 a.m. And then they're able to sustain that little bit of willpower to get them to, you know, 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. A lot of people do 2 p.m. to 8 p.m., don't they? That's their sort of six hour eating window. Some people have an eight hour eating window where it's like midday till 8 p.m., whatever it is. That is what intermittent fasting is. Intermittent fasting is basically I mean, it's kind of a bit stupid because we are all intermittently fasting. When we aren't eating, you are intermittently fasting. Because if you think about the two words, right? Fasting, not eating, intermittently for a short or a, for a sustained period of time, right? So by going to bed from your last meal to when you break your fast, you are intermittent fasting. So every human being does this, but labeling it and making it almost like a bit of a, a club. I don't think it's a cult, but a bit of a club. Like keto for me is like a cult. Like, <laughs> Intermittent fasting is more of a club. They're, they're, they're a bit friendlier. Veganism, cult. <laughs> That's probably the worst one. They, like, they, 
they actively hate a group of people who are omnivorous, which is literally every human being on the planet. And it is it's quite funny. Not every vegan, I'm not saying every vegan is bad, of course I'm not, but there is a group of vegans who genuinely like hate people because they eat meat. It's bizarre. It's, it's a reflection of themselves, to be honest. Anyway, let's not get into that. Um, it's a bit of fasting, Doug. Okay, so we are all intermittent fasting. It's for the most, the, the majority of people, it's effectively skipping breakfast, right? We've, I'm sure you've heard this before. However, I think a lot of people are doing it wrong for two reasons. Number one is gonna make logical sense when I tell it to you, I think, I hope. And logical, uh, number two is, is some relatively new sort of science that's coming out. And like with science, we have to take, we have to take it for what it is, but, and we base it on the quality of the scientific study. But we also have to recognize that the, the science in, in every field, particularly nutrition and neuroscience and stuff, is constantly evolving. So we take it with a pinch of salt, but we, you know, we use it, the evidence, if it's, if it's high quality evidence. And the logical explanation for why I think a lot of people are doing intermittent fasting wrong is the impact that it's going to have on your sleep. So realistically, if you want to be getting the best possible quality and quantity of sleep, you want to stop eating three to four hours before you go to sleep. Because eating is a pretty taxing process on your body, digestion breaking down those foods. It uses a lot of essential vital organs. It's a, it's a very metabolic process. It burn, you burn calories whilst you're digesting food. And of course, you're not burning as many calories as if you were running 100 meters or lifting heavy weights or something like that, but you are still engaged in metabolic activity. And as a result of that, it makes it very difficult for your body and your brain to enter deep sleep because it's still purring away. It's still working away, right? So similar thoughts are right. If you've had a very intensive work day and you've worked right up to the point where you're like, I just literally need to get some sleep, you tend to sleep pretty badly because your brain is still on, right? It takes some time for your brain to calm down. It's the same with your body. So, and ultimately, I believe first principles, first starting, start and end point of a virtuous cycle, you know, it really comes back to sleep, guys. Sleep, the impact sleep has on, you know, our physical health, our mental health, our endocrine system, which is our hormone function, is crazy important. Like I think I said it yesterday, you know, I was forever reminded, you get two or three good night's sleeps in a row, you feel invincible, right, for, for, for that day. And it's amazing. And you, you, you feel better in yourself, you're more confident, you eat better, you're not as hungry, you train harder, you lift heavier, and you're creating this virtuous cycle. And then you get to the end of the day and you're like, bloody hell, that was a great day, I wanna do the same again. And so you go to bed again and you feel, and it just builds and builds and builds. It's the, it's the building block of momentum, I think. It's very hard to do for some people, I appreciate, because some people are just worse sleeper than others. Some people have children, which obviously makes, you know, sleep much more challenging. I don't have that, so I was gonna say problem. Children are not a problem, children are amazing, but you know what I mean. But, you know, if we can prioritize our sleep, if we can do everything that we possibly can to improve the quality and quantity of our sleep, then we should be doing it. And when, when we eat, is very much in our control, for the most part. There's some days it might not be, but for the most part, it is. So I would say if intermittent fasting works for you, then absolutely, that's fantastic. And if you are actually seeing results from it, like the result that you want, then keep going in that direction, right? Because it's working for you. If you've just started it, then great, give it a couple of weeks, see if it works for you. Because ultimately, like the method you pick, the first couple of weeks is a bit of a given that it's going to be hard because you're trying to create change. If after two to three weeks, you're really struggling with the method that you have picked, in this case, intermittent fasting, then consider picking another method. Because ultimately, like I said at the beginning, if you are consuming calories in a deficit, it doesn't matter which method you pick because they will all get you the same result. You've got to pick the method, find the method that works the best for you and your lifestyle, okay? So for example, if you're a shift worker, NHS, nurse, doctor, whatever it might be, something like that, you're a night shift worker, intermittent fasting is not going to work for you, right? And I'm sure you know that if you're in that position. So that's fine, we've got to accept that and we've got to find something else that works for us. So I think that's, that's kind of the logical reason as to why I would suggest shifting your intermittent fasting and bringing your eating window as far forward as you possibly can. You might not be hungry at 7 a.m., 8 a.m., whatever it might be, 
But if you're hungry, basically as soon as you actually get hungry, I would encourage you to break your fast and go, go for it. Because then you can close your eating window earlier in the day or in the evening, and you're much more likely to sleep longer and probably more importantly, better. And you're gonna wake up and you're actually gonna be refreshed, you're gonna have new energy and you're gonna feel great. And then the second reason, which is the scientific reason, is that they've, this, this latest scientific study has found, and it, again, it kind of makes sense, we are most metabolic, we are better at absorbing nutrients earlier in the day. So whatever you're doing to break your fast, if it's like, I, I, I don't know off the top of my head the time frame they're talking about, it's not ridiculous like four in the morning, but equally it's not 2 p.m. Like the earlier that you're breaking your fast, the better in terms of nutrient absorption. Because ultimately a, a lot of people, because they don't have the right gut microbiome or whatever it might be, or they're just eating like terrible quality calories, they're not actually absorbing many nutrients from that food. And if you're not absorbing the nutrients, then you're not getting the benefit of, those, of that food. You're not, getting, you're not absorbing the protein, the carbs, the fats, right? And these macronutrients all have their benefits, right? Protein is very much for cellular generation. People go straight to muscle, but it's skincare, health, um, eye care, nails, uh, everything. Every cell requires the presence of protein to be, you know, to create, to be created. Carbohydrates are our body's preferred source of fuel, our body's preferred source of energy, and fat very much supports your endocrine system and your, and your immune function. Very basic macronutrient breakdown there. So if you're eating later in the day, you're compromising your body's ability to absorb those nutrients and actually use the food and the fuel that you are giving it in the best possible way. So there you go, that's the two reasons. Intermittent fasting, if it works for you, like I said, I'm not hating on it. Carry on, crack on, if it works for you. That's the most important thing. Do not see it as this dogmatic, I have to do this because everyone else is doing it and that is how you lose body fat. There are many a way you can do it. There are many a way, okay? But if it works for you, crack on. If you've just started, give it a couple of weeks, see how it goes. It might work for you, it might not, but don't worry if it doesn't work for you because there are plenty of other methods out there that will. So it's just a case of going, okay, I've given it a go. This hasn't worked for me. Let me try something else. Maybe veganism will work for you. If it does, please supplement with your protein. Maybe you're gonna go carnivore. If you do, please do eat vegetables for God's sakes. Maybe people are gonna go keto or maybe, <laughs> Maybe you just go for a balanced omnivorous diet because you don't have to go to these extremes of you know, cutting out entire food groups or only eating meat. You know, these things are pretty insane. Like the, the, the outliers are always brought to the surface. So the people who you saw in that like, Game Changers documentary, which was a vegan propaganda movie built by James Cameron, who has uh, monetary interests in the vegan um, world, financial, he makes, fine. he makes money when people go vegan, basically. Um, versus, you know, the carnivore, which people like um, Joe Rogan, Jordan Peterson are huge advocates of. Because these guys are the outliers. They have seen insanely positive results on both ends of the spectrum, right? They put a guy who's absolutely shredded, says he feels amazing on Game Changers. You're like, oh, I'm going to go vegan, right? Because I'm going to look like him, right? Or you've got um, Jordan or his daughter, Michaela Peterson, who have horrendous autoimmune diseases. They have gone carnivorous, um, and uh, from what I understand, they've effectively been cured of their autoimmune disease, or it been put into remission, which is amazing, and I'm, I'm so happy for them. But it doesn't mean that's going to be the same for you, nor do you probably have all these issues. So you don't need these extreme approaches. I know they sound sexy, and I know they sound like they must be the answer because you feel like you've tried the simple things. I hear this all the time. And we're, we're programmed, I think, in our brains to believe that the solution must be the most complicated, most difficult thing. The most difficult thing about sticking to a calorie deficit, to be really honest with you, is after a while, it's pretty boring, you know? Once you get over that first few weeks and you're starting to see the results and you're like, oh, you just feel that peace of mind, you're starting to get, you know, you're moving in the right direction. You're just in the trenches, you're just living. But what's nice about it is it, it's a way of life. And if intermittent fasting does that for you, then fantastic, but what I would say is try to bring your eating window further forward in the day so that you are starting eating earlier and finishing eating earlier. That way that you're going to absorb as many of the nutrients as you possibly can and you're going to improve the quality and quantity of your sleep and then you're just gonna feel so much better 
All of your hormones are gonna be a nice balance. You're gonna feel like you wanna exercise and move and get fresh air and sunlight. You're gonna to wanna to socialize, your confidence is gonna be high. Just in every possible metric of your life is going to get better if your quantity and quality of sleep improves. And we can't control every factor of our sleep. However, what we can control is when we finish up eating. And I police myself hard on this, trust me, because I got, I let myself slip and I found my, myself eating dinner at like 8, 9 p.m. And literally, you could see and feel the noticeable changes in my sleep and my mood the next day. It's a big thing down here in sort of Mediterranean culture where I am in Spain, right? People eat, uh, eat later and I'm not, I'm not expecting them to change their entire culture because I'm sat here on YouTube telling them it's terrible but they also have a shift in their lifestyle. Most people don't start work here until 10, 11 a.m. Whereas in the UK or the US, you're, you're basically expected to work from the second you wake up nowadays, right? And if you're waking up at six or 7 a.m. and you finished up eating at 9 p.m., yeah, it's not gonna help, it's not gonna help. Right, I feel like I've said everything a couple of times there. Hopefully that was useful, hopefully that was helpful. I'll be back tomorrow, day 24. Tune in then, I'll see you then, I love you lots. Cheers.